Can I talk to you about something that's always bothered me? Every piece of advice that you'll ever get around starting a business or running a business will always be about how you have to drive real value for customers. The companies that work and the companies that don't work, it comes down to can you drive value for your customers? It's it's like super simple. People will pay to have them overcome problems or to do things they don't know how to do or things that they don't want to do or to look a certain way or feel a certain way. People will pay for all of those things, right? Because there's an inherent value to what you're giving them or what you're offering them. And here's the thing that's always bothered me. People think in terms of how do I drive as much value as possible right away, but then the value fades or they take for granted that the value is there, right? Like they're selling something and it's really big and it's really awesome and it's going to be amazing, but it takes forever for you to actually deliver the value to the customer. And so the customer loses interest, they lose hope, they lose trust, and so it fades. This, this is what bothers me. People focus on immediate value or they focus on long-term value. And I want us to focus on immediate and never-ending value. No matter who you are helping, how you are helping them, whether it's uh, for fun, whether it's because you're a coach or you're an entrepreneur or you're developing a new product, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You need to add value to the people in your life. You have to. But as I said, the problem is people focus on driving as much value as possible and then and then it falls off. We see this with friendships, right? Like you meet new people and it's fun and you're going, yeah, no, and then it, and then like over the course of time, it fades away, right? You were able to drive immediate value, but it wasn't never ending, right? The value that you had as friends faded over time. You've seen this probably with your customers or your clients, right? It just, it fades over time because you're so good and so amazing out of the gate, but you just can't keep it up. Or You're the type of person who can drive like just really good long-term value. So we have certain projects in our company where it takes like three to six months to be able to deliver. And so the excitement is there and it's like, yeah, we're going to do this amazing project. Think about like building a house. Think about building a custom home, right? I don't know if you've ever done that process or not, but it takes time to be able to select an architect and it's super exciting to get everything drawn up. And then, and then you, and you have the lot and you need the permits and you need to get stuff built and all of this stuff. So it's going to take you like a year to year and a half, year and a half to get that house. But it has a tremendous amount of long-term value, right? Once you are in the home, it's amazing. But the difference between being super excited to be able to have this dream come true and moving in and living there is so long that... It's easy to get discouraged, uh, to, to run into conflict, to change your mind, to run out of money, to um, lose trust in your architect or your builder, all kinds of things, right? All kinds of things because the builder and the architects and everyone involved is just hoping, is just dreaming and wishing that that the long-term value, right? If I just do a good enough job of getting you the home that you want, that you're gonna, it's gonna make up for everything else. But in the middle is this crazy valley that people go through. And so when I think about any business or any service, the goal in my mind that the company needs to provide, the goal that you need to provide when you're thinking about value for your customers is immediate and never ending value. Immediate value means what can I do this hour, this day, this week to drive value to you? And then next week, I'm gonna ask the same question. Week after that, I'm gonna ask the same question. It's the immediate value. And that could be a handwritten note. That can be a call I'm thinking about you. It can be a text. It can be you rushing a project forward. It can be doing some kind of tour or above and beyond or a gift, right? Like it's, it's, it's whatever they value. But what can you do to drive value today? It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be difficult. But, but if you're busy thinking about future value, you're not thinking about today. You're, you're hoping, you're banking that that future thing that you do will make up for today. I want you to think about today. And if you're the type of person who can drive immediate value, but you struggle on the long term, you struggle to keep people forever or for a really long time, I want you to not only just focus on what value you can drive immediately today, how are you going to change? How are you going to challenge? How are you going to keep it fresh so you drive value forever? 
And so think about when Apple first launched um, the iPhone, all right? Immediate value, if you can get your hands on one, it's super cool, it's awesome. When they finally came out with a 3G or you know, when we moved in the 4S and people are really starting to get them, immediate value, right? Immediate value, I've got one, it's awesome, it's cool, it's, it's hip, everybody wants one. How were they able to drive never ending value? New features, new products, new releases, new style, new apps, you know, longer battery life. That never ending value wasn't in the single sale. It was to try and keep people and hold them for a very long time. Now you can argue whether they've been able to do that for the last 13 years or not, but they were focused on immediate value and they were focused on never ending value because they wanted to continue to keep their customer base. I have a friend, Nick Tabor, who I met at Evan Carmichael's Thought Leadership Academy. And I was speaking there and he came in and here's how the conversation went. He was talking about his client base and I was asking how long he can retain his clients for. How long do you usually keep them? And he said, you know what? I'm out in um, you know, the Northeast and for some reason where I am, people only keep their personal trainers for 18 months. And I said, okay, so rather than accept the norm that people only keep a personal trainer for 18 months, rather than just throw your hands up and go, well, that's the case. How do I, you know, one way to go is like people only want them for 18 months. So I'm going to keep my funnel filled. I'm going to keep meeting new people because I'm going to burn through clients every 18 months and I got to keep this machine fed rather than accept that. I said, why not become the type of person that people don't want to leave after 18 months? Why not offer the service or become the type of person where people just stay for two or three or four or five years, right? Because if you're good for 18 months, you're driving immediate value and you're able to drive value over the 18 months. But you need to drive the immediate value and the never ending. And so the never ending challenges you to think, great, what do I need to do at six months, at 12 months, at 18 months? How do I need to change for these more advanced people? What do I need to offer to keep things fresh? What do I need to do to have people not only buy into it to begin with, but to continue to buy into it for a long time? And this thinking this immediate and never ending thinking changes not only what you value and your customers value, but how your services, your products, your offering will shift over the lifetime of the customer. And that that's like magic. If you think about that and you work it and you test it and your goal is to be able to bring on the very best people and keep them forever. This does crazy things for your business or for your relationships or for your life. You're, you know, you're not allowing them to outgrow you or you outgrow them if it makes sense for you. And so there may come a time where, you know what? Yes, I can only hold on to a customer for 24 months because I take them from here to here and then someone else is going to take them from here to here. Maybe, maybe that's your business model. Maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe that's what you need to do and that's fine. But the immediate never ending value is from here to here. It's not just selling or banking that by the end it's gonna be amazing. It's what can I do for people today? What can I do for people this week? And the next month and the month after that and the month after that, what am I still doing for them? And so the thing that trips up entrepreneurs and business people and people who wanna grow and people who wanna change and people who wanna do all those things, what trips them up is everyone talks about the value they need to drive for others, but they're so worried about themselves. They're still selfish, right? And so they start thinking about value and they think about value in like really high sweeping terms. You need to think about what you are doing for other people every day. And if you do that, if you give, and if you give and give, I mean, you're going to get things back. You're going to learn things. You're going to be able to talk to them. You're going to build credibility in their mind. You're going to be able to build goodwill so you can then draw on that bank later if you make a mistake or if you have a question. Give and give and give. Immediate and never-ending value. I want to see you and your business grow. I want you to have the most extraordinary life that you can. If you like this video, you should check out this one as well. I think you'd like it a lot, and I'll see you there.